Next speaker's topic is European Accessibility Act. Welcome, senior expert Immaculada Placencia Porrero from European Commission Social Affairs. At the end, there is time for questions and comments. Please welcome. <laughs> Okay. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Let me start by apologizing for not being able to be with you uh, in the very interesting conference that uh, you have organized. But I will, I'm very happy to be able to take this opportunity to present to you the European Accessibility Act. So if I can have the first slide, the next slide, please. Okay, back in 2010, the Commission had been working a lot on um, issues related to accessibility standardization and accessibility policies. There had been several communications done and a couple of mandates been issued to develop accessibility standards. Nevertheless, it was clear that this would not, was not enough, was not perceived to be enough to address all the barriers that persons with disabilities were experiencing. That is why uh, in, with the adoption of the European Disability Strategy in 2010, uh, the Commission took a commitment to use um, all possible instruments to improve accessibility and to explore the merit of having uh, and adopting new regulatory uh, measures. If I can have the next slide. We wanted to focus on uh, accessibility um, as an instrument to um, dismantle those barriers. And in fact, our guiding um, our guiding uh, instrument was the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So the objective was to ensure access to those rights, to have equal access. On one hand, we were complementing uh, legislation on, non, on protection from discrimination, but we wanted to have very specific uh, instruments to dismantle those barriers and to have a clear um, idea of what accessibility was about. Accessibility as a tool, as I mentioned, for ensuring equal access, equal access to products and services by persons with disabilities. But accessibility is a part of what is necessary to ensure that equal access. Let's not forget that when you define accessibility using a set of requirements, um, we are taking those requirements um, looking and considering what are the most common barriers, but there will always be persons that would need reasonable accommodation. They would need assistive technologies. And that is very important that goes hand in hand with accessibility. So the equation that we wanted to, and we are working to, um, to uh, solve is ensuring equal access by having adequate accessibility and um, in good interoperability and complementing uh, reasonable accommodation. This is where uh, the internal market comes together with um, with reasonable with uh, non-discrimination legislation. Can I have the next slide, please? So what was the situation in Europe? We had at the time, um, uh, and we still have, because the, the, we still have different approaches. Some member states have uh, put in place legislation which is very, very technical and to very specific areas. Uh, some others have based accessibility uh, on anti-discrimination uh, legislation. Basically, they have said that in order to provide equal treatment to persons with disabilities, um, accessibility must be uh, provided. And they declare or they in introduce some legislation 
that um, describes what accessibility is. Others have limited the um, legislation or the approach to accessibility to procurement, meaning they are basically um, putting accessibility obligations on public authorities by buying accessible. We also saw a very different material scope of the various national legislations. Almost all have, all member states have some built environment accessibility legislation, diverse and at different levels, but there is something. Concerning ICT, uh, information and communication technologies, the situation was very different. Some member states have been pioneering in uh, uh, putting web accessibility legislation in place. Some others do not have uh, that. And uh, given the possibilities that, for example, the European telecommunications directives offer, some member states have developed and built on that very, uh, I would say, um, adequate um, accessibility legislation. Some others have uh, limited, have very limited provisions. In relation to the level of detail, the, the, the legislations of member states is very, very diverse. Some contain very detailed technical parameters and uh, specific provisions, while others have legislation at the level of declarations of principles. Even the level of jurisdiction was different. Some member states had legislation at national, some at regional and local level, some uh, only at national, some only at, at uh, uh, regional level. So we have really a very diverging uh, approaches in Europe. And that is where we entered with uh, the European Accessibility Act. If I can have the next slide. We, uh, the Accessibility Act aimed to harmonize approaches in Europe, to harmonize accessibility, and uh, to ensure that we have um, a common level playing field in Europe in relation to accessibility of products and services, so that um, persons with disabilities can, can have certainty and an assurance of what they can expect, not only in their member state, but when they go to other member states, so that we, take advantages of the internal market. So going now to the content of the Accessibility Act. It has uh, two, two um, main uh, legs. First of all, it contains um, a set of obligations to accessibility requirements for a number of carefully selected products and services. There is a very strong um, ICT component in those products and services. I will explain them, I will list them in a minute. This is the first leg. The second leg uh, is using exactly the same accessibility requirements, but um, they are being used in other EU law, which already contains certain accessibility uh, obligations. For example, public procurement. There is already legislation that requires to buy accessible. And if you buy accessible, if you buy the products and services uh, covered by the Accessibility Act, you would have an obligation to buy them accessible. And if you um, buy other products and services and you um, use the requirements, the accessibility requirements which are in the Act, then you will be provided with presumption of compliance. In other words, you will know that you are buying accessible. Can I have the next slide? Please. So this is the list of products in the scope of the Act. We have computers, operating systems, some service terminals, some service terminals, not all of them, but all payment terminals, uh, ATS, ticketing machines. Um, we have also the type of equipment used for electronic communication services. What is that? Those are telephones, smartphones, modems, you name it. Equipment used for um, uh, telecommunication services. The similarly, equipment used for audiovisual media services, which would be 
for example, set-top boxes, digital TVs, and so forth. And finally, e-readers, so dedicated devices for reading e-books. This is the list of products. When we go to services in the next slide, what we uh, see is that we have um, the electronic communication services, and uh, those are mainly the telecommunications and communication services. The um, colleges later exempted the um, transmission services used for the provision of machine-to-machine -machine services. This was a pity because this is going to be necessary for the Internet of Things, but nevertheless, um, although there is no obligation on those uh, transmission services to include accessibility, we hope really that um, um, electronic communication service providers will be uh, looking to the future and already consider accessibility in a voluntary manner. We have services uh, providing access to audiovisual media services. Here I would like to distinguish between the content of um, audiovisual media service, so for example TV programs, which are covered under another directive, the audiovisual media service directive, and the what is covered here, which is those services that provide access, for example, the electronic programming guides would need to be accessible, for example, the web pages where you will find um, TV programs and so forth. The third um, group of services are those related to uh, transport legislation. We have four modes of transport, air, bus, rail and water bone. And we are covering certain elements of um, those services, complementing already existing European passenger rights legislation. So what are we covering? Where are we demanding accessibility? Well, accessibility will be required for the websites, the mobile device-based services. This means apps or any other type of service that would be delivered in your mobile device. In electronic tickets, and the whole ticketing process would have to be accessible, and information, including real-time information, when people are traveling, would have to be provided in accessible formats, and self-service terminals. There are some conditions for uh, those self-service terminals, but in general, they will have to be uh, provided uh, in, uh, to be uh, accessible, for um, persons with disabilities. So not only we will have the manufacturer, you saw that self-service terminals were in the products, we will have manufacturers that have to place in the market accessible self-service terminals, but we will have also service providers that will have the obligation to replace the existing terminals by new accessible terminals under certain conditions. The next service is banking service, consumer banking services. And we have also ebooks and a dedicated software that will have to be accessible from the beginning and e-commerce. This is very important because e-commerce is really uh, increasing significantly. It's really the future and um, it will have to be accessible for persons with disabilities. This is the main, these are the main products and services in the scope. In the next slide, what I have is other important elements. So let me explain. The first one is the answering of emergency communications to the European number 112. Already in EU legislation and the Accessibility Act also put a requirement, we have the obligation for telecom service providers to ensure that um, uh, their service, the, the service offered to the consumer, would be able to call in accessible manner this number 112. What the Accessibility Act has done uh, is complement those obligations by requiring that public authorities um, or, or even private, so those authorities responsible for answering the number 112 will do it also in accessible manner. This means that we would complete the chain from 
the user that will have accessible equipment, then accessible communications, and then accessible access. And so the intention is that persons with disabilities would be able to use across Europe 112 in an accessible manner. We have provisions also related to the built environment. There, the idea is that uh, member states may decide to fulfill the requirements in the directive. They may say no and then keep national legislation, but we have the possibility for adhering to the European uh, requirements. As I mentioned before, we have also provisions related to public procurement and the accessibility requirements in the Act are compulsory for the products and services which are in the scope of the Act, but for other, for other products and services, um, the procurement um, gets presumption of conformity. This is the same case for other EU Acts. For example, take the obligations and their the structural funds. If you use the requirements of the Accessibility Act, then you get presumption of compliance, meaning you know that you are accessible um, when using the EU funds. In the next slide, I'm going to uh, indicate what are the main provisions for products. So, um, as I indicated, we are looking, we are regulating uh, accessibility from an internal market component. So the first um, provisions relate to the free movement of products and also services. It will be the same provision on services. What does it mean? Products that fulfill the accessibility obligations of this directive uh, will be, have the possibility of free movement, so to be offered in all member states uh, freely, um, freely meaning that uh, they, their circulation cannot be impeded um, in all the member states, in the internal market. Then the directive contains a number of specific obligations for manufacturers, authorized representatives, importers, and distribution distributors. These are obligations that have been inspired in a decision um, to, taken in 2008 on how to regulate the internal market for products. So it's similar for, uh, to the uh, provisions, for example, used for safety of certain products. Once um, the product is accessible, the manufacturer has the obligation to put the C marking. So the C marking is the way of um, indicating that the product will comply complies with the accessibility requirements and complies with the directive. We come to the enforcement, and in the enforcement, uh, we start with a very light option, which is um, self-declaration. In other uh, words, the manufacturer, manufacturer declares that um, declares that um, they uh, fulfill the accessibility obligations of the directive. But that is complemented by market surveillance, which uh, puts obligations on uh, member states to have authorities that are going to check compliance with the accessibility requirements, but also compliance with the safeguards in the, in the directive. Concerning services in the same slides, you will see that the provisions in the directive can I have the next slide, please? That the provisions in the directive um, for services resemble to a certain extent that of products. You have some accessibility obligations, then service providers get the free movement, assurance of free movement of their service across the EU. And then we have some ob um, obligations for the service providers to ensure regular checking and, and regular um, um, assurance that the product, oh, sorry, that the service is provided in an accessible manner. In addition, 
um, service providers have to uh, declare or explain in the general terms and conditions how the service is accessible. And finally, there are uh, obligations for the member states to ensure that there is an authority that is also going to check the compliance of, uh, of service with the accessibility requirements of the directive. We have in the next slide some um, uh, exceptions, some mitigating, some, some measures that are uh, considered to be uh, exceptions uh, to these obligations that I just explained. First, the college legislators decided to exempt micro enterprises that deliver services from the scope of the directive. There is a definition of micro enterprises on the directive, and those will not have to um, fulfill or provide accessible services. When it comes to micro enterprises related to products, they are in the directive, so they will have to comply with obligations but there are some mitigating measures uh, for the burden. So they will have less obligations of reporting in uh, admin so less administrations, and member states may develop some guidelines in order to um, help them to comply with accessibility. The directive also contains two safeguards, one on disproportionate burden and one on fundamental alteration. Let me explain that this proportionate burden could be declared by the economic operator uh, and then they do not have to, they, they have to provide the accessibility requirements only to the extent that the burden to do so is not considered to be disproportionate. Let me say that while it is the economic operator, the one that assess at first instance whether the burden is disproportionate or not, this has to be checked also by the market surveillance authorities. The second safeguard is what is called fundamental alteration. This means that economic operators have to comply with the accessibility requirements to the extent that their products are not fundamentally altered. Let me give you an example to understand what it means. If I am a manufacturer of miniature phones, miniature telephones, nobody could, um, the directive does not require, does not require to start making phones with big displays or big buttons because that would fundamentally alter the nature of the uh, product, which is the phone which is a miniature uh, phone. Of course, you could provide some accessibility uh, features. For example, you could provide some of the accessibility information in a website, or you would be, of course, able to have maybe an, uh, a spoken interface, but um, a tactile interface. But the essence of the product, the fundamental characteristics of the product, uh, are not required uh, to be changed. In the next slide, you can see some elements, other key elements of the directive. The directive um, allows for the use of standards and technical specifications to provide presumption of conformity. In other words, the legislator can uh, point out two standards that describe in more detail the accessibility, the functional accessibility requirements of the directive. And if you comply with those, it's one way of uh, fulfilling the requirements of the directive. Similarly, uh, we can adopt technical specifications under certain conditions. On the enforcement side, I already told you that we start in a soft manner. We said that uh, first the economic operator have to declare compliance. Then uh, a little bit more strong step is to have uh, national uh, authorities um, um, that will check if those declarations are correct and will check the compliance of the products of the services. 
But finally, we have the possibility of the directive for end users, for um, uh, end consumers to go to court in cases of non-compliance and seek redress. Um, there is uh, the intention is that then um, the, there is a remedial action taken to ensure the compliance of the product or the service and that uh, the court has the possibility of putting penalties which will be proportionate, effective and dissuasive. On the timeline for implementation, we have three years for transposition, so member states have three years for transpos transposing the text of the directive into national law, and another three years uh, then for economic operators to comply with those obligations. So we are talking of a total life uh, uh, timeline of six years. After five years, um, the Commission will have to, of um, the implementation of the directive, the Commission will have to put uh, a report in place, a report in which we describe if the directive is properly functioning or not, what effects and impacts that has it had on the market, on persons with disabilities, and then um, we would be able to propose other measures if needed. The directive is accompanied by a number of annexes. The first one contains the accessibility requirements. The second one contains some examples uh, of what those requirements mean. Those examples are not binding and are just illustrating what the, those requirements could mean. But they are also not ex ex um, exclusive and they are not exhaustive. The third annex contains the accessibility requirements for the built environment. Those are functional requirements that uh, can be adopted by the member states. Annex four contains uh, the conformity, the documentation for the conformity assessment of products. And annex five contains the equivalent, which is we call it information on services meeting accessibility requirements for services. So it requires, as I mentioned before, to put in the general terms and conditions how, um, how uh, services comply with accessibility. Excuse me, um, we are running out of time. So um, if we could finished. just have uh, time for questions also. Yes, OK, okay. I'm finishing. <laughs> So um, very quickly, then we have got an annex six that will ex um, indicate how to calculate those disproportionate burden. In the next slide, you will list, uh, I have listed a number of standardization mandates uh, uh, that, uh, so that you have it with you. It tells um, the standards that are there and the work that uh, we have been doing in order to have standards in the area of ICT, in the built environment, and on the process of design for all. The last slide that I have is the next one and describes the link with other um, accessibility legislation done at European level. We have web accessibility legislation for which we have exactly the same requirements, accessibility requirements. I mentioned already other two, the electronic communication code, that focuses on equivalent access and it contains um, uh, some requirements for telecom operators. Uh, finally, the audiovisual media services that regulates the accessibility of content. There are much more. I mean, there are about uh, 30 legal acts that have to do with accessibility and that we use in the directive, but um, I would leave it now uh, so that we have really time for questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for your keynote speech. Uh, it was really interesting. There was one question in Twitter. Uh, one member of our audience asks that, uh, well, that says that it sounds great, but uh, do you remember also understandability and usability? What do you say? Yes. That, uh, uh, understandability. 
understandability that it's understandable all, all the services and usability that is easy to use are these questions also understood in the accessibility act yes understandability is one of the requirements that we have uh, put in the annex of the directive uh, it relates to the information that is being provided and um, it is a, a very important issue. Usability is something that goes uh, complements accessibility and the directive regulates accessibility but does not regulate usability. However, if I may elaborate, I'm sure that by having products more accessible products that fulfill the accessibility requirements, they will be more usable uh, by um, certain uh, part of the population. Certainly persons with disabilities would be able to better use those products, but it will benefit also the large uh, part of the population. Let's remember that the requirements of accessibility that we have put in the Act are requirements that are functional and we have tried to uh, follow up a design for all, a universal design principle. And that I'm sure that products will become more accessible, but we more usable, sorry, uh, when becoming more accessible, but we are not regulating usability. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Not this time, so thank you very much, Immaculada Placentia Perrero. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you. puheenvuorossa ehkä se tärkein sisältö oli se, että tämä saavutettavuus työ perustuu vammaisstrategiaan, mikä mikä on vielä ensi vuoteen asti voimassa Euroopan unionin tasolla lainsäädännön tilanne saavutettavuuden suhteen vaihtelee huomattavasti. Ja tällä pyritään harmonisoimaan näitä käytäntöjä, jotta EU-kansalaisten oikeudet toteutuvat yhdenvertaisesti.